bit somebody oh, yeah. 10 cents 20 cents one cent one dogecoin at this point <laughs> I mean, you can bid tw- or you can uh, give 12 cents worth of bits. They actually had a thing. I don't know if it's still going on where you can watch ads on Twitch to get like fraction, like pennies and throw them at your favorite streamer. I mean, I don't know where we get the most. We get like th- four or five viewers on YouTube and I don't know what we get on Twitch, but nothing. I would like to literally nothing. nothing. Okay. Not live, but anyway. Well, we got a few, and I'm trying to like figure out. I'm watching people cut their grass, and they have a hundred thousand viewers. I'm yeah, like, how do we do that? I watch uh, people gotta... detail their car. <laughs> you get popular on Twitch, and then you leverage that to move your audience somewhere else. Right. Yeah, you live? have to be pre-popular. pre-popular. We are live. Like my my crappy gaming podcast gets maximum of 15 viewers max absolute max and yet everyone everyone and their brother has a youtube channel with a thousand views i mean yeah i leverage my son into like streaming him playing mario kart (laughs) that works okay uh okay we're live 265 i I forgot the number again. Anyway, you ready? Yep. Okay. Three. Well, again, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 265 of the security podcast here in the In30 Network. I'm hi, I'm Tom is somewhere is there. Here. There. And and Tom's ears makes this all possible. We've never explained Tom's ears, but we have a machine just to stream the two of us. Yep. Because so we, Google got... all many years ago screwed up and won't let us won't record hangouts so yeah that's that's kind of a real tragedy i loved hangouts live or hangouts on air it was great i mean i think i think the new meeting apps will do it so zoom teams whatever the problem is they're all garbage i love how people say i really hate webex i'm like have you tried teams I hear people on Teams like I hate Teams. Maybe I should. I love WebEx. I mean, WebEx it's... is awful. I, you know, honestly, as much hate as it gets, Zoom works really well. There's a reason that everyone and their mother jumped immediately to Zoom during the pandemic. It's because it's basically one click and it just works everywhere. And honestly, it's the best meeting experience I've had in any application, and I've used nearly all of them. I mean. Zoom does just the video. Teams does everything else and it's integrated, but boy, does it eat RAM. It eats RAM. It destroys computers. And like somebody messaged me in Teams and it takes five minutes for me to find it. And I I I wish Teams was better. And you know, you know, I actually I take it back. I, I take it all back. The very, very best, like audio, video, chat, streaming, like all of this in one application, my absolute favorite is Discord because it just works. It's high quality and man, it does everything. Everything from text chats to rooms to permissions to server management, like Discord is just fantastic. Uh, I I don't like certain things about Discord, but... Man, do they have a solid product. I was going to say Discord or, I mean, Slack. I mean, but I feel like Discord just works. And and the again, you have to get a Discord account and everything else. But at this point, most people would have one who care. But I don't know. I just don't want Discord everything. It seems like everything is like, hey, security podcast now on Discord. No, we're not doing that. Not yet, at least. I mean... Yeah, somebody the, the invited only... me to a cryptocurrency Discord. I'm like, for what? For what am I doing with that? <laughs> Collusion. Um, the <laughs> the only like bad thing I can say about Discord, I guess not the only bad thing, but this is a security podcast. Uh, Discord is not end to end encrypted at all, right? The the Discord admins can see everything you do all the time right they of course use everything that's over https and it's it's encrypted all the way up to the endpoint. but it is not end-to-end encrypted at all whatsoever um so 
just an important thing to keep in mind. I mean, I know we're security podcasts, but not everything needs to be end-to-end -end encrypted. I just want some things to work. I would love end-to-end -end encrypted, all the things, but we said this about email a few weeks ago. I I'm done with end-to-end -end encrypted email. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do other things with that. Anyway, we're, we're nearly four minutes in. We got two topics today. Um, since Tom's going to be explaining both of them, uh, which one do you want to go with first? Uh, let's, let's do signal first. Uh, and then we can, we can end with the happy tale of Google V Oracle. Okay. So, uh, so signal wants to find a way to tra to send us encrypted payments. And, and I think we're both on the same page of we saw it like, that's cool, but why? Uh, I mean, yeah, I would love to. I would love to send Tom some encrypted money, uh, some encrypted cryptocurrency. I would love to send dollars, like encrypted dollars, like so he can have it. The problem is, is that we, it's it's a really hard problem to solve, and their implementation doesn't make it enough that we're going to say this is a good thing yet. So take it away. Yeah, and with, with the full disclaimer that you and I haven't used the beta, right? The beta is open in the UK only, um, just due to the way that mobile coin is deciding to roll out. Um, now, a Signal wants to enable a cryptocurrency called mobile coin in their application and allow people uh, to transact with each other. Now, I... I rolled my eyes so hard i fell out of my chair uh when i heard about this right it's don't get me wrong cryptocurrency is really cool i think the technology is a good idea i think there's a lot of really nasty flaws with it right um and generally like in the past couple of years cryptocurrency has gone from this cool tech thing of wow look at this cool technology i wonder what real world problems it will solve and it's kind of turned into this really scummy, like uh, half Ponzi scheme, half like investment, multi-level marketing thing, like Keybase used Stellar as kind of a, a growth hack. Like, oh, hey, if you have a Keybase account, we'll give you a bunch of free money. Uh, and that was really scummy and caused some spam issues. Like I got hit with spam after that because they said, oh, well, if you want the money, you have to chat with people. I, well, nobody uses Keybase for that. I mean, at, at the end of the day, nobody uses Keybase. Um, I, I loved Keybase. I really did, but it, it wasn't really a critical success in the marketplace. Um, but Signal points out some really unfortunate things about the, the world today uh, and transaction privacy and the fact that there really isn't any, right? Uh, everyone from MasterCard to Visa to Discover to American Express, they're all looking at data. Uh, and they're looking at selling that data and getting even more data, even down to like the the actual itemized list of what was bought here with this card, like the SKU level details of what was purchased, uh, because then they can they can monetize that data. It's a little terrifying. Um, and then, of course, you know, uh, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, whoever also does the same kind of data mining, right? When you pay for something through PayPal, they're they're analyzing that, right? And on one hand, they kind of have to. They can't make a completely like hands off. There's no data in this system because there are regulations around uh, like money laundering and you know enabling illegal activities, and they they need to make sure that there isn't fraud happening on their platform. And then, you know, more importantly to the business themselves and not necessarily the outside world, they have to make sure that you're not doing anything on the platform that, uh, you know, is robbing people blind, essentially, right? They need to look out uh, for fraud on their platform under their noses. Uh, and Signal said, hey, this is a problem and we would like to try to fix this. Um, so... It's UK only right now. It's partner. They're partnering with a, uh, a cryptocurrency called Mobile Coin, which is designed to be used with mobile devices specifically. Uh, right now, there's a million and a half different cryptocurrencies out there, but you know, ultimately, know that 
I would say the vast majority of the popular ones aren't really applicable to the mobile landscape. They're either super heavy with needing to download full copies of the blockchain or needing to watch full copies of the blockchain, which isn't going to work for the speed you need in a mobile app. Um, and, uh, you know, certain ones like Bitcoin, they have this like pseudo anonymity thing where, yeah, it's not like your name to the transaction, but ultimately and honestly, Bitcoin is not private at all. It's actually explicitly public. Um, there was actually a story today where uh, a bunch of Bitcoin stolen from, I want to say Binance a while ago, uh, was just moved for the first time in years. And now everybody's watching this like, oh, oh. The thieves moved their Bitcoin. What are they going to do with it now? Uh, and we're all just kind of sitting and waiting for what would happen. Um, right. And like stuff like that is antithetical to, to Signal's message of privacy and encryption for all. Um, I see several problems with this. Right. The, the first one being getting tied up in cryptocurrency today has got a lot of negative connotation with it. Maybe that's not such a problem, right? Maybe they don't care about the optics of it, but frankly, I do. And it's it's kind of kind of sketchy. Like, I, I wish I could articulate it more, but the landscape of cryptocurrency is really not great right now. And Signal getting wrapped up in that is kind of a, a dilution of the purity that is Signal, right? Signal is just a great end-to-end -end encrypted messaging app. And frankly, that's all I wanted it to be. Um, adding in I have a good analogy for you. I think I have a good weird. analogy for you. So I go to the, I go to the college football games and some ICO trading Bitcoin type mobile coin company has been advertising the past two years. And I, I don't even remember what it is, but I remember going to the website while at the game saying, Hey, let's look at this. The website didn't even exist yet. It's just there. And, and so you're like, it doesn't exist. And they're advertising, like they're giving Rutgers money. And apparently, and then you hear all the celebrities endorsing all these, uh, all these cryptocurrencies. And you're just like, how do I explain this to my mother? How do I explain to them what Stellar is or uh, JSTOR or SafeMoon or all these, ran or Dogecoin? Like, how do you explain Dogecoin? And, and so it's, it's, everyone knows Bitcoin, but I mean, I was reading a story today. The very first uh, Bitcoin transaction was Domino's. It's like 10 P they've like a hundred Bitcoin for like two pizzas. Now imagine that hundred coins. Now the hundred Bitcoins now it's worth a couple million dollars, but it's one of those, it's one of those people can't get behind it. And then to transfer it, to do everything, it's just, it, it just feels heavy and it feels like there's a lot to go wrong. The reason things like Coinbase and Mount, Mount Gox back in the day was easy was because they had a really slick PayPal. They have a slick interface. You can use your debit card. It buys it for you. It stores it for you. Yes, you can do all the stuff that we talked about, the cold storage and the wallet. But really, you're just putting, it's just another bank account where they have these currencies. And and I, I don't know, Venmo to me works. I mean, Ven, like I use Venmo, yeah. it works. Um, the memo line, I mean, I usually write something funny. Uh, I the, mean, it's the fact meaningless, that Venmo but... tries to build a social network out of payments is outlandish and stupid. And I, I know we're not a political podcast, but as we've seen recently, there's been uh, a, a certain high profile person in some really hot water because he was very... Uh, upfront and honest about what he was buying on Venmo on a public transaction. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of stupidity that can happen and, and you know, to signals credit, they do point that out, right? Um, they, they have a list of six objectives that they're trying to tackle with this, right? Like, like they point out Giphy integration, like putting gifts in messages, right? That I, I don't think that the analogy really works because people like putting gifts in messages because they're fun. Um, but they, they do point out their objectives, which is that Signal shouldn't have access to your keys or your funds, and the information should be in your own wallet. I, 
I have I have a concern there. I know why they want to do that, and it's because they want you to be in control of your data always. But I don't know if they understand the trade-offs of that, right? Like if if you are holding your own Bitcoin wallet and something happens to it or your hard drive dies or whatever, right? A tale as old as time, um, you have now just lost money. And hopefully in a mobile payment app, you don't have like a bunch of money sitting there. But if you do, like what do you do? It's just gone, right? There's no getting that back. Um, so I think they could burn people with that if they're not careful. Um, the, the second objective is, you know, all data is private. Cool. We can all agree on that. Uh, number three, transactions are fast. Okay. I've got something to say there, um, but we'll get to that here in a bit. Number four is everything works well on mobile. All right. Cool. Uh, number five, uh, everything is simple and it works basically the same as Venmo. All right, that's great. And number six, it can scale to hundreds of millions of people. So on number four, on the ease, or uh, number, th uh, shoot. Number three was whatever. Venmo. Yeah. On the, um, on the speed. Yeah, so on, on number three, where, you know, things, or uh, number five, God, this is the worst list. Um, on number five, where things are simple and they just work. I think Signal is starting at the wrong point in the stack, right? They they are in the middle between two people wanting to transact money, right? They're not at the bank end. Um, they're, they're not like at the payment processor level. They're not even in the middle where they're facilitating. They're literally like on kind of the middle outside edges periphery of this problem where they're quite literally just the messenger. Um, and the issue is that you're at least from what they're saying, like, I can't go to Signal, plug in a credit card and buy mobile coin. And at that point, if, if I plug in a credit card and buy mobile coin or plug in a bank account or buy it from an exchange, right, my anonymity is already compromised at that point. It's not necessarily that the exchange knows what I'm using this for. Like once it goes somewhere else, right, depending on the privacy guarantees and of this model, which I haven't done a ton of research into, but like, they already know that, hey, Tom, you bought a hundred bucks worth of mobile coin. Where did that go? But they now know that I'm interested in private currency for whatever, which isn't necessarily indicative of guilt, but could look kind of shady depending on where you're at, what you're doing, and who's asking. Um, so, and then... Well, why can't it just be dollars? Like, literally, why can't it be dollars or euros? Okay, I bought 100 euro, $100 worth of euro, and it's stored in the Signal account, and I send it to you. The transaction gets verified. I don't know how they verify it. And then the log disappears. I don't Can't you do that? Because Signal would have to hold the cash at that point. It can't be... It, you can't be in control of your data, right? They have to have a balance sheet or a ledger somewhere that says oh. these people have this much money. Um, so... Like, even, I, I would argue that the bigger problem is the usability of this, right? I have to sign up for an exchange, one that supports mobile coin, which I, there aren't many, right? It's a new thing and it's just getting started. So how do I even obtain this currency to put it in the signal to send to somebody else? And then the person on the other side, they just, they, they get a pile of this random cryptocurrency that they then have to go to an exchange and sign up there, like verify their identity, submit their driver's license, right? Make sure they're not laundering money. And then they can pull it back out in their local currency. I, I really like cryptocurrencies as kind of this great equalizer because no matter where you are in the globe, we can transact in Doge, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, whatever, right? And it doesn't matter international boundaries and all that stuff. It's just across the net, which is really cool. But when it comes to being able to use that on a daily basis, like tonight, I am going to get burgers delivered to my house. You know what Uber Eats doesn't take? Bitcoin, Dogecoin, MobileCoin, Ethereum. You know what they do take? Cold hard dollars. Uh, and frankly, my, uh, my MasterCard gives them cold hard dollars. I can't pay Uber Eats with MobileCoin. I can't pay them with Signal. I can't pay them uh, with Venmo, right? It's, it has to go but through their You may their be able to. <laughs> right, I might be able to Some pay them through Venmo are, one day. But I mean, that I, is a new thing. Now, PayPal, like you can pay a Home Depot. Like you can buy a house with PayPal. I guess that's true, Home Depot. yeah. But no, 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 but you're right. It's they take they want a credit card thing, and we keep we keep on saying this. Not everything needs to be decentralized. 
something can go through a database. The idea is you want it anonymous. And I don't, and maybe I'm just not smart enough to think of the whole macro idea, but I, I, I don't know. I mean, you can just go to the bank, get a whole bunch of money and do it the old, old fashioned way, put it in the mail, like put stacks of money in the mail or go somewhere and meet behind some park bench and trade it. But and I get what they're doing. They're trying to rebuild. Not, I don't want to say rebuild Silk Road because that implies illegality, uh, illegal things. But that's what they're trying to do. I I think if they're going, they announce this, it's one way too early, like way, way, way too early, even to announce that they're thinking like this. I mean, not having an exchange ready is. It, I mean, that that's like canary builds nonsense. That's not even we're think. That's before we're thinking about it. That's that's a shower thought. So- yeah, like you you can buy mobile coin. It's just not like super widely supported yet. It's it's still brand 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 new. Um and and you know to Signal's credit, they do give some beta feedback uh in in this blog post where they say uh you know, cryptocurrency is the worst. And their answer is cool, don't use it. But I, I don't think they understand the the point behind that, which is, hey, you're taking this nice product with a really solid, like a, a really solid use case story, right? I want to send messages to people end to end encrypted completely privately. Cool. That's a really solid use case. Um, the cryptocurrency use cases are kind of nebulous. Uh, for several reasons. Uh, they also point out, hey, right now the fees are too high, right? They're 60 cents. That's kind of that's kind of high, especially when you look at the contemporaries like Venmo and PayPal, uh, where, you know, in, in some transactions, the fees are nothing. Um, you know, number three, they point out, funds are too hard to get in and out, that the exchange problem. Uh, and they say, yeah, we agree. <laughs> cool. And then number four, price volatility is weird, right? Like if I put 50 bucks into my PayPal account, like if I did that last year, you know how much that's worth today? 50 bucks. If I bought 50 bucks worth of Bitcoin or Dogecoin or whatever, what's it worth today, right? Like what's what's the volatility? Where where do things go? And uh, frankly, the, the cryptocurrency is the main issue they have and – Tether is not an option. Tether is a Ponzi scheme. Um, but the, the main issue they have is because they're not tied to these fiat currencies. So they can go up and down in value. And, you know, the 50 bucks you put in last year could be worth 75 or 100 today, or they could be worth nothing, right? In, in like uh, referring to like a failed cryptocurrency. So what do you do with that? How, how do you ensure against that kind of fluctuation? And you know, some people are going to use signal as a bank. Cool. Well, if they have $5,000 in there and their phone blows up and there's no backup because signal is signal and wants to be private by default, right? They haven't answered a lot of these really key, really core usability problems. And it's it's kind of shady. The the other thing that they did is they didn't update their the signal server code for forever, uh, basically, um, because they didn't want to leak out the fact that they were working on a cryptocurrency platform. Like that's that's kind of shady. That's baby with the bathwater kind of throwing out right there. And I I do not appreciate that. They're they're compromising their values around open source because they didn't want to leak a feature that they were working on that they knew would cause a hubbub. Like, it seems like when faced with a decision of what should Signal do in this situation, they literally at every single step of the way chose the thing that would cause the largest PR kerfuffle imaginable. And I, I, it's, I love Signal. I really do. If you've listened to the show for any amount of time, you know that we're both huge fans of Signal, but man... It, when when you're digging yourself in a hole, the first thing you do is put down the shovel in boxy. Dude, put down the shovel. You're halfway to the center of the earth, man. Like, just drop it already. But then there's the other thing that he's on the board of trustees for mobile coin and everything else. And maybe he's... They, I think they, they need to hire, well, he's, hire he's a good a, PR firm. He's a technical advisor um, to... To mobile coin. He they have claimed that Moxie doesn't own any mobile coin. There's no stake in this, but there's no like transparency around 
what being a technical advisor to this foundation gives him, right? Is it out the goodness of his heart? Is it free? Is he paying them? Are they paying him? Like there's, there's a lot of questions tied up in this that no one's being really transparent on. And I, I'm not arguing, you know, that we should, we should have full transparency into Moxie Marlin Spike's bank accounts. That's not what I'm arguing, but at the very least they can say, yeah, he's getting a sum. He's getting, you know, a, an ongoing payment to contract with this foundation Cool. That answers or that question. Or MobileCoin is paying his salary through Signal, like paying it to Signal yeah. and it gets paid. So they can use this as a tax deduction, whatever it is. I mean, just tell us what's going on. I mean, and, and, and I don't think there's anything nefarious. I just think that it's, it's way too early to say anything. I mean, to say, hey, does anybody, how about a call for ideas? Like, how, what, what are the, what, what do you want in, a super trust no one, super secure trust no one mobile payment scheme and let people who do this for a living explain where the, the points are. And because no exchange is just going to let you buy something without uh, no, no legitimate exchange. Coinbase doesn't let you buy anything without them verifying you with your bank account or, or PayPal, same with PayPal. Uh, so I don't know what this is going to do. Maybe you have to buy and then move Bitcoin in and then convert it, but that's not private and not easy. But anyway, we are and- basically at a time, so I want to move on. We're going to yeah, go long, but I've, I've got I've got one one more uh-huh. thing on the usability aspect. So let's let's take let's take Cash App or Venmo, right? I want to send you some money. I'm going to install the app. I'm going to take a picture of my credit card. It's going to just auto magically machine learning computer vision fill in that stuff i'm going to type in the amount i'm going to type in your phone number email address i'm going to hit send and then it's done and you have it right how signal wins in the chat marketplace is basically they're as easy as whatsapp you install the thing everybody's in your phone book already you send a message it's literally as easy as that uh, with mobile coin, they now have to compete with Venmo or PayPal levels of usability and involving an exchange at any point in this process is not the way to do that. You have already lost the usability battle. So why are you even doing this? Right. If you say, oh, well, I want to send you some cash for, you know, for the slice of pizza. Okay, well, let me go to the exchange and sign up, and then I'm going to send you this cash. And then you have to sign up for the exchange and verify your identity, and then you can turn it back into fiat currency. This is a no-go. It's just, it's dead on the table already. It's not going to happen. Um, yeah, that's, look, that's all I got to say there. It. No, they may solve it, but it's just be too long. Look, we're going to yeah. go long, but we do want to transition into uh, the Supreme Court ruling of Google versus Oracle. And the good news is uh, prag- pragmatism and sensibility won out over pure capitalism, which is a good thing. So uh, which means that I Google started did wrong. Win so I let, Oracle. Or, or Oracle yeah, lost. Google did win. <laughs> and when Oracle loses, it's always a good day. Anyway, do you want to take it? Because I started off wrong about what it was. So Yeah. So um if if you didn't know, there's been this huge like knockdown drag out fight for years now on uh Google re-implementing the Java programming language inside of Android. Um and uh, they they did this for for a few reasons, but well, hold on, hold on. You're you're too far. You're too far ahead. Let, let's go way, way, way back. 1994, Sun Microsystem invents Java really quickly. It's free. You needed a license, but they didn't really fight it because what's a free license? It's free, fine, whatever. It's just some paperwork. Google decides Android should work on Java. They build it out. Oracle buys Sun Java from Sun for $9 billion. Then they say, you know what? We're going to go after the big whale, which is Google, for using Java without paying us. So that's how it started. Google wins the first round. <clears throat> Google wins the second round. Oracle wins the third round. Then it, go, it gets re- remanded back somewhere else. Google wins. Then Oracle wins. And now it's at the Supreme Court. And now we're talking about what an API is. Yeah, so if, if you don't know, generally programming languages have um, have APIs, they have a standard library, right? And it's it's usually like base level things. Like the example that was very clearly given in the Supreme Court documents is Max. Uh, so uh, Java Math Max. Basically, you can hand it two integers and say, hey, what's the maximum? 
what's the biggest of these numbers? And it's quite literally, if this number is bigger than this number, well, return the first one. If the second one's bigger, return the second one. What Google did with, uh, with Java and Android is they literally took the function signature, basically the name, right? They said, okay, well, it's called max. We're going to leave it called max in our code. Uh, and then it takes in two numbers and it hands you back the bigger number. So they literally took just that section, basically the, the header. Uh, the, the function signature, as it's called in programming, uh, it's named max, it takes in two integers and it hands you back one integer. That is the line of code that they took. They took stuff from the standard library in Java that was just the function signatures and they filled in the middle bits, right? Uh, it's basically like if you were to try to build a screwdriver from scratch that would open up Phillips head screws. Now, the it kind of breaks down the metaphor because uh, the Phillips head screwdriver does have a patent associated with it, but we're going to throw all that out. Let's say you wanted to build a compatible screwdriver uh, and you literally just took uh, the shape, not necessarily everything that goes along with it. And you wanted to, you know, either make it more performant or make it work for someone else or just use it for your own benefit, but you know that it's under your control and you can take the function headers. Um, Google took, I want to say there was a percentage here uh, that they point out. It's like 0.7%. I'm sorry. Um, Breyer said that Google used about 0.4% uh, of the total Java source code and was minimal. Uh, they actually successfully argued, Google successfully argued to the Supreme Court um, that this should be covered under fair use. They took the function signature and they made their own implementation, right? They filled out the middle bits. They didn't copy it. Um, yeah. Now, what, what this would have meant if Oracle had won is that APIs, those function signatures, the thing that say it has to work like this to be able to be compatible with our system would be copyrightable which is super, super, super dangerous. Um, right now with programming languages, you can make your own spin, your own version, right? Like for Ruby, we've got everything from MRuby to JRuby to toy Ruby compilers to people just implementing it for fun because they can. Um, all of those would be illegal forks of a copyrighted work at that point. Uh, if it were like under that draconian copyright law. Um, now Ruby in particular is under a permissive license, so it doesn't really fit there, but Java owned by Oracle could say, hey, anybody else who is making a competing implementation of Java, like OpenJDK, the open source project, uh, yeah, you're not allowed to do that anymore. We could sue you because it's, it's copywritten. Um, this also means that alternative implementations of things, right, like the MP3 codec, uh, you know, lib lame, uh, the lame MP3 encoder, which was a free MP3 encoder back in the day, um, right. Flew in the face of copyright and said, Hey, we're making a competing implementation that's compatible, but it's ours. They made it. Um, and yeah, that would be 100% illegal if Oracle had one. Uh, what this basically means is that, uh, rationality has one out and we can now make, you know, compatible competing alternatives to standards that will freely slot into uh, wherever we need them to fit without the fear of uh, retribution, thanks to fair use. I, I mean, I was re I was looking at some of the Supreme Court wording and they were they were saying, hey, look, we agree. We deep down agree that that what Google did was wrong. I mean, they, they really far detail. But if we allowed this to go through, it would basically devastate the programming industry as a whole. If someone were to take something that's so fundamentally core to anything and say, hey, uh, uh, license, we need money for this and all the way up the chain and everything else. So it's it's one of those things that, like you said, the, the Supreme Court probably could have ruled for Oracle if they were going to be pure, unadulterated capitalists and said, no, you stole this, everything else. However, they said, you know what? They didn't do, like you said, 0.04% of, of the source code and they, they changed it and they had, and they changed it on purpose. Like there was a purpose to change it, even though it was to not pay Oracle. It was, and Google at that point, their mission, I guess, was don't be evil. And they wanted it. And they, and they, again, they said on their own licenses, like, I don't think they don't license their own version of 
of I guess Kotlin, I don't know, of, of Java or Android, you need, you can have a AOSP on your phone. If you want the Google stuff, you have to license it, but they said, Hey, you can do this. So I feel, I mean, it's a huge win for Google. It's a huge win for everyone else. And it allows you to say, Hey, I want to rewrite this max function, or I want to rewrite the sign function or square root function. And I have to worry about someone saying you spelled square root the same way I spared spelled square root, pay me money. So yeah. Now, one one thing that people don't understand about the purpose of copyright laws, it's, it's not this draconian evil thing. As much as I personally hate how copyright works in this country and in most countries around the world today, uh, the purpose of copyright is actually originally to encourage creativity. Uh, imagine if you built something and somebody just copied it and sold it, right? Like if you're an author, you wrote a book, you published the book and somebody like scribbled down the book exactly or photocopied it and put it on the shelf next to yours and said, yep, it's uh, 50 cents cheaper. Would you be incentivized to write any more books? No, of course not. It's just going to get copied and thrown to the wind. Why on earth would I spend a bunch of time making something when somebody else is just going to copy all my hard work for free and make a profit off it and I'm sitting here starving? There's no way I'd be an author. Um, and, and copyright was designed to kind of prevent that problem and say, hey, look, when you write something, when you make something, you have a specific amount of time where that is under copyright protection, where you own this thing that you have created. And that incentivizes you to make more. Uh, now, there, there is the public domain, and that encourages like free and open culture and like a general evolution of things. And that's kind of died in, in the US and in, in many places, um, which is super unfortunate, but that's a t totally different Disney problem that we can get into uh, in, in the what's or in the uh, signal group, uh, if you're really interested in that. Um, but the Supreme Court did specifically call out, and I'm going to read directly from Wikipedia on Google LLC versus Oracle America Incorporated uh, in the Supreme Court section. Um, Breyer said that uh, at the time Google copied the Java APIs, it wasn't clear if Android would be successful. I'm paraphrasing here. Um, uh, Breyer further stated that if they had found for Oracle, it would cause harm to the public because Oracle alone would hold the keys. Uh, the result could very well uh, could prove highly profitable to Oracle or other firms holding copyrights in computer interfaces, but the lock would interfere with and not further copyrights' basic creativity objectives. Basically, if a company like Oracle could say, uh, and I apologize for my phone, if a company like Oracle could say you aren't allowed to do anything with java without our express permission then it would harm the creativity uh, in the marketplace and harm the the creativity underpinnings of copyright law um so yeah it turns out that yeah google was wrong and oracle was wrong in totally different ways but ultimately uh the supreme court ruled in favor of people uh and that's fantastic um a conservative Rashi supreme court Remember that, Rash it's a conservative Supreme Court, so. Rationalism won out. Um, so, yeah, if if you're looking at Twitter's API you're, and uh, you, you want to you wanna make a competing implementation, if you want to make a social network and say, yeah, it kind of works like Twitter's API and you can just use whatever, like all the tools that worked with Twitter, it'll work on our side. Guess what? You can. And that's a beautiful thing. I mean, you can think of it this way. Huawei has the 5G standard, and that's a big problem. The, China, the, uh, the Chinese government, Huawei is run by the Chinese government. They were the ones that did all the, the technology. They, I mean, if they were an American company with this, they can say, you know what? You can't use any of it. You have to make your own 5G standard, which basically, unfortunately, is what happened um, because there's an embargo on Huawei stuff. But they could have said, you know what? We're just going to keep this to ourselves. And oh, by the way, if you copy it, we're going to sue you. It's like, but you're not using it. Can't you like help us? Like we want to, we want to pay you. Nope. We don't want it. We just want you to not have it. That's, that's another, that's another thing that they have going, but again, so different show. There's oh. a lot of, there's a lot of technologies out there and I, I cannot without express permission, go into exactly what technologies. Um, but there are a lot of technologies out there through several different, uh, let's call them cloud vendors, um, when it comes to storage. Now, there's overwhelmingly one winner in cloud storage, and everybody else decided to copy 
that API. Now, what that means is because the API is the same through several different cloud vendors, all doing the exact same thing of, uh, we'll call it blob storage uh, in the cloud, that if you have a tool that works with one vendor, because the APIs are the same overwhelmingly across several vendors, you can use you know, vendor A, B, C, or D without having to change your tooling at all. Uh, you literally just point it to a different place and all of your applications continue to work. So this means that the cloud vendors now have to compete with each other on price and features uh, and not necessarily compatibility, which is great because it means the ecosystem is large, diverse, thriving, and competitive, most importantly. Uh, so if you would like to talk about copyright law uh, and, and the Disneyfication of copyright law, please join the Signal Group. And that is all I have to say. And I don't think there's any lawyers in that Signal Group, but... I don't, we don't know who's in the signal group, but so we can just purely speculate without being legal scholars. But with that said, I know we're over, but it was a good episode. We'll see everyone hopefully next week and have a good night and till next time. Bye. Bye. 38 minutes. That's good. We did that yeah. quickly. That was good. Let me shut okay, down Twitch.